Uh, a very good evening to all of you and welcome to the session of Eclectica. Well, today we are doing a very interesting uh, session and I have my guest who will be coming in soon, who is Dr. Vidhi Bhanushali, co-founder of Dental Dost. So I will shortly introduce uh, my guest uh, till the time she joins. And this particular session we are hosting and we are trying to actually encourage you towards dental innovations and how you see real life people uh, from where uh, they are coming in and uh, uh, they have started everything on their own. So here is about our guest. So Dr. Vedhi Bhanushali is the co-founder and chief dental surgeon at Dental Dose, a recipient of Pear Faucher International Merit Award and gold medalist in pedodontics and preventive dentistry. She is a holistic dentist who believes that everyone should have access to oral health care, irrespective of class and geography. So that's very, very interesting thing that's happening inside uh, dental dose that she's doing well uh, to add on something more she strongly believes that teledentistry is the way to achieve that early in her career as a dental practitioner she realized that india has some of the worst dental health statistics in the world that set her on a three-year entrepreneurship journey to deliver dentistry to all in a smart way. Dr. Vidhi has also spoken at various dental colleges, addressing the dental fraternity about dental services and innovations. She is a keen researcher and has published various papers on recent advances in dentistry. So here is Dr. Vidhi. Thank you, Dr. Vidhi, for accepting my invitation to Eclectica, and I welcome you today in this show. Thank you so much, Dr. Gargi. I'm equally excited to share my journey with all of you. Fantastic to have you. And I was I was really fascinated when I was introducing you. And I am sure our audience uh, too were are very interested to know from you and uh, learn from you. Okay, so let's go inside our conversation. And um, uh, well, I know the, the brief uh, description or brief bio that you have sent me, which I could just, uh, you know, finish up in a few seconds, but I'm sure that there is a lot more to know about you. So please tell us more about yourself. As a lot of pointers were covered on the introduction, but add more uh, on that, right? Uh, yeah. I have done my dentistry. I've graduated from the Institute of Medical Sciences. Okay. Am I audible? Yes, yes, very much. Yeah. yeah. And uh, during my uh, BDS, I realized that I had always had a flair for technology and was just mm. uh, amazed at how technology is changing things. The right amalgamation of technology with medicine is what uh, we need in order to change Correct. the situation of healthcare overall or so uh, after my day I started with my first year even before mm -hmm. uh, third year was that okay. a lot what the real problem and during my second and third year, I had some idea about you know, what should I be doing after uh, my BDS is completed. I did practice for three years after my graduation to have a, yeah to have a detailed understanding of the patient's attitude, which is different uh, from what we mm. see in the college, to mm. have a reality. And later, which led me uh, you know uh, completely stop my practice and focus completely on dental ghost when we saw it flying. Amazing. That's amazing to know. So, um, like, like as you say that you get caught into entrepreneurship. So, how did you decide to enter entrepreneurship? And uh, along with that, I would like to know that did you get any formal training on that? 
so uh, about the formal training no there was none i had a chance to do one healthcare entrepreneur entrepreneurship which was given by uh, provided by uh, the hyderabad okay it was back in 2018 and i had already started with my journey of entrepreneurship in 2018 with dental dose mm -hmm. or to be there Uh, I'm I'm sorry to interrupt, Dr. Vidhi. Dr. Vidhi, your uh, I think your network is a little unstable, and we are not able to hear you properly. So uh, maybe can you just log out and log in once more quickly? Okay. So we always have some bloopers when it comes to um, you know. uh stuff like live shows so that's not a problem but our conversation will go on and uh, i will try to tell uh, about uh, dental dose as much as i have heard from dr vidhi herself before um you know like uh, this uh, she has built some uh, platform where actually she is uh, reaching to people in the remote areas and so that making uh, the dental consultation accessible where at least the people uh, can uh, come up and they can actually uh, take the snaps of their initial problem and they can share with the dentist well 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 we have our guest back so uh, sorry no problem no problem now it is perfectly fine no i was just when you were away i was just telling what you said when we had a conversation over the phone i was just telling to my audience that what exactly uh, dental dose is doing and how you know you have formulated but yes we will hear from you uh, in 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 our uh, in our conversation ahead so yes i was just asking that did you get any formal training and you said that it was not at all and you started your entrepreneurship in 2018 okay um you are on mute you are on mute okay i think there's a lot of network issue yeah yes yes yeah, dr yeah. mithi yeah but i didn't opt for it and i, I thought the journey was uh, pretty seamless right the first part of your question how hmm. did uh, how did i start with my journey yeah i mean uh, Uh, after as i mentioned after my graduation in during my years of practice i just did not interact with patients but i conducted a lot of service with uh, dental surgeons all mm -hmm. across india so the ones in pune mumbai i used to visit in person and others were the one which i connected online to understand the kind of problems which i am facing as a dental practitioner mm -hmm. not just in the practice but to evaluate and understand a person psychology or patient psyche mm -hmm. Uh, and if if the same problem troubles them right mm. the, the kind of prevalence rate of oral diseases which we see in the country mm. and we have really good number of uh, dental surgeons more right. than three, yet we are not able to solve the oral healthcare problem in india mm. so i did a, a survey among patients among partners mm. which are partners as in the dental practitioners which are now our partners mm -hmm. try to put in these pieces of puzzle to understand what's the right way of solving this so it Fantastic. was quite a seamless journey if you ask uh, me mm -hmm. so i was managing practice i was uh, you know doing this basic market research homework mm -hmm. for uh, startup dental dose and eventually as it grew as the number of people increased as the operation also increased i had to leave my practice completely in order to just manage dental dose amazing that's amazing so uh, so what was the inspiration behind dental dose but because what i understand from what you share right now uh, you were quite focused from a very young age you are still young i'm not telling i'm not uh, quantifying your age in numbers but yes like as you said from second year of bds third year of bds you had some focus to do something uh, on your own so what was the inspiration behind uh, dental dose first uh, there were multiple touch points uh, okay regards inspiration but first point was uh, obviously very bad situation with regards to awareness about oral healthcare in general public and not just the one who are 
इकोनॉमिक बैकवर्ड और और ड्यू टू एजुकेशन और ड्यू टू दोग्राफी बट ऑल्सो वेल एजुकेटेड लिटरेट पीपल हु आर अवेयर अबाउट ऑल दी थिंग्स बट यू नो नॉट ओरल केयर सेकेंड टच पॉइंट वॉज वेन आई हैड इंटरेक्टेड विथ मल्टीपल कैंसर पेशेंट्स now we know that india is oral cancer capital of uh, capital of the world mm. and it's very sad to see them coming to us uh, during later stages right stage 2 where we have hardly uh, uh, any conservative treatment which we can do exactly yes so i thought why not if they can diagnose all this deadly diseases mm. and also not that deadly with regards to teeth but again these are all, uh, all irreversible diseases how about we make a diagnosis so easy for them so mm. friendly and uh, fearless which they would you know uh, help to educate a person about what's happening inside his or her oral, oral cavity and if mm. he's motivated in the right technique they would mm. obviously opt for the further procedures correct so the, the cancer patients were second and third as i mentioned i have always had a flair for technology mm. and if we can just integrate it in some or the other way to be very honest we didn't have an idea how this would pan out but as we started from blog from our helpline and now the app you know uh, we just in the direction yes amazing amazing it is so inspiring to you know hear from you so um, can you please tell us more about your company and the kind of services uh, it offers yes so uh, dental dose as you rightly mentioned is an early diagnosis platform for users which enables any layman to get a detailed report on diagnosis treatment planning and prognosis just by clicking a few photos of his oral cavity we have also integrated a video scan wherein if i can just show you know you can just uh, turn on uh, the video from your back or front camera and just mm-hmm. do a simple action of e Ah, uh, and up, uh, and it's mm-hmm. as easy as that. So, uh, what I mean by early diagnosis is whatever we can capture from the RGB images, which are captured from a smartphone, mm. we would uh, segment, augment, and contour a tooth to understand mm. if a disease is a pit and fissure, stain, calculus, mm. fracture, malaligned tooth, gap, missing tooth, and so on and so forth. once the diagnosis is taken uh, it's ready the patient gets a report on his smartphone and one of our dental surgeons from team immediately gets in touch with patients to give okay. more information okay uh, yeah so we either consult a patient through a uh, telephonic consultation or video consultation whatever he opts for mhm mhm post that uh, these are two services one is the core scan app scan and second is the helpline or the teleconsultation later once the patient is convinced and now is motivated completely mm-hmm. we send the patient to our partner doctor now all these partner doctors are dental surgeons uh, bds mds however the requirement is from that particular area and patient gets the treatment done the, the entire pre treatment intra treatment and post treatment follow up giving information to the patient is done by our team of dental surgeons okay that is very nice I think I think now you know like internet and smartphone it has reached to even remote most remote I mean how to say remotest place uh, places so everyone has a smartphone uh, nowadays so I think in this way you are you are taking dental care to those remote parts and just in few clicks I must say because uh, though uh, I mean both in terms of awareness as well as in terms of getting them treated in the right way because that is very important uh, and as you rightly said in the beginning it's not only about the you being educated with some degrees or you being illiterate so it's about a uh, awareness and motivation to keep uh, our oral health uh, uh, better and keep it healthy yeah absolutely so, amazing amazing so just to uh, mention one point as yeah. you rightly mentioned right uh, yeah. penetration of smartphones and internet hmm. uh, digitally right digital integration in india and globally it's very shocking to know this factual number that more number hmm. of people have smartphones than to mm-hmm. than a toothbrush so <laughs> True. yeah okay, just hardly 51% of indian population has a toothbrush and i think more than 70% <laughs> have a smartphone which is connected to internet 
सो ऑल्सो वन मोर पॉइंट यू नो अगर स्मार्टफोन है इंटरनेट है तो डेंटल दोस्त है एंड ओवर ओवरऑल अवेयरनेस है टूटिंग to mm-hmm. answering a few questions about sensitivity or dry mouth or bleeding gums mm-hmm. to getting a report could be seen anywhere so if you see our website there's a platform same mm-hmm. we have integrated on whatsapp mm-hmm. and also the same flow you will be finding in the app amazing so, yeah if anybody wants to integrate this flow yes. for example say in in an instagram messenger or a facebook messenger so even uh-huh. that's Wow this is something revolutionary i think you have done a very revolutionary work in that way i must say yeah so um so dr vidhi like when uh, i was just talking to you about this uh, particular interview show we were just discussing uh, uh, in a very informal way so uh, i learned that you conduct some uh, uh, training program so can you for aspiring dentists so can you tell us a little bit on the type of industry training programs that you are conducting or you have conducted uh, you know before it will be very useful for all of our viewers i would just love to talk about that it has been my personal experience uh, hmm. going back to your first question hmm. did i get any formal training or did ah. i know if i'm ready to start with an industry uh, let alone you know start something of my own exactly same experience of mine and what i've seen in uh, all the graduates which come out of college there's a huge difference between what industries are demanding and mm. what they can giving you know so i i thought, agree yes not all oh, okay so we are lo- we are losing uh, dr vidhi in between due to bad network uh, but i think the conversation is very very interesting and uh, <laughs> i hope that we get her back very soon uh, uh, and as you know that you say that you uh, the 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 breadth of things that dental those uh, app discovering is is really really fascinating so i think uh, it, it's it's a it, see uh, just from her bds days she has focused on a very very simple thing that is oral awareness and how to provide a uh, simple treatment to people so from there she concept conceptualized and she came up with the uh, uh, today she is uh, running her own company and she has uh, this ai based uh, technology the app which can be used by anyone who has a smartphone and internet connection so uh, unfortunately we are losing her uh, due to the uh, bad internet connectivity but i think uh, it is this point should be very uh, you know we should take take up this kind of uh, experiences for, uh, by listening to such real life people uh, because uh, they are actually doing the work and like them anybody uh, can do it there is nothing that you cannot do it so i was just telling my audience that we are losing you in a very interesting point <laughs> Oh, the network <laughs> yes please please continue i don't know if something was wrong with the room i just shifted my cabin that got into cabin with the, with my god so now <laughs> there should not be a drop of network <laughs> <laughs> sure yes dr yes. vidhi you were talking okay. very something very interesting uh, regarding the training and uh, yeah please right so there's a lot of difference between mm. what we get in academics and mm. what industry the expectations are right, so i thought right. why not train students right from their final year or while they are in an internship hmm. to give a realistic check to also train them about what has changed in industry uh, uh, from last a few decades and how is the situation now because if we see the syllabus right we are still taught the ones when the first college in india had started so there's not much change absolutely absolutely in case dental technical uh, stuff hmm. right either it's yeah. theory yeah. or practical sadly hmm. there's no training for if you want to opt for options other than training uh, hmm. sorry other than your clinical work 
Mm. Or joining academics, they have no idea. And now you see in the last two to three years, there are so many dental uh, tech startups which have come, especially in India and also globally. So, right from you know, how do you do a basic market research? Mm. What does the research mean to begin with? Correct. What are the points that you should be evaluating in order to get an idea if you want to start something? Mm. What are the skills which you should be learning, like uh, you know, market analysis or content writing, for example, or True. even soft skills is what I mentioned, right? How do you talk uh, to a person one on one, or how do you address people uh, mm. in group mass? So right from these basics to even very very advanced things like how would you annotate an image which is mm. now used by a machine learning? So mm. you won't believe uh, the the language. Uh, of uh, technical uh, jargon like mm. you know python or node js or java oh. and mm. how do you use these annotations the language the dental surgeons in my team speak it's just like you would think you know are the engineers something ah, of that i, I mean yes. i feel like the same right now when you speak <laughs> yeah they understand what is front end back end they understand mm. when we talk about flutter they understand what is tensor flow now these are all technical uh, things Right. So, as I mentioned, the, the spectrum is very wide, right from mm. the basics of content writing and how do you present yourself mm. to the complicated technical stuff is what we train for. Mm. Uh, as of now, we have tied up, uh, or uh, to put it in the words, we have spoken to 12 uh, institutes, okay. mostly in Maharashtra and a few in mm. uh, Karnataka, Okay. about having some kind of a collaboration with them where we can get especially interns to come in the office for a week long or a month long program if they want to do internship with us uh -huh. we would give them all the uh, theoretical training we conduct test and then we uh -huh. give them hands on experience so by nice. the time yeah even before they are graduate uh, after their internship uh -huh. they have a very clear understanding of their inclination towards clinical non clinical path and if non clinical uh -huh. happening in their industry true true yeah. very true that's that's so so inspiring that's so nice to see and i think you are you are amazingly innovative and creative i mean i mean that that's an entrepreneurial uh, you know seed that entrepreneurs have by default anyway <laughs> so okay so uh, coming to i think we are almost at the concluding part of our conversation uh, just that you know nowadays uh, 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 for some time people are saying that dentistry is dying this is something which i have been hearing a lot dentistry is dying it is saturated and stuff like that so uh, what is your opinion my op my opinion is really uh, the opposite of it i mean we <laughs> know, we know more number of uh, dental graduates are uh, coming out in the market as supposed to required because as WHO ratio says, right, we need one dentist for every 7,500 patients. Mm. But in India, we have one dentist for every 5,000 patients. Right. The distribution is really uh, uh, not in place. It's skewed up because in urban areas, we have one dentist for 2,500 patients. Mm. In rural India, we have one dentist for 35,000. So if uh, in case of practice, I'll first talk and then about the overall mm. scenario. If you want to have a really good practice, you have to fight off competition in metro tier one cities. Mm. If you want, a, 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 you know, if you want a very uh, seamless practice, why not opt for uh, to open a clinic where there are no doctors, no Correct. dentists? Now, government has made it uh, compulsory for all the MBBS or MD uh, postgraduates to do one year in a mm. in a village or a town, right? Mm. So maybe uh, those could be made for a for like six months program where an intern would get a real uh, realistic check about practicing mm. in a tier three uh, city or even villages towns is not as bad as what they imagine because mm. as of now they have no idea they're just assuming mm. I, I don't want to settle in some small town i want to be in you know all the metro cities true and regards to people saying dentistry is dying a big big no I think next 10 years would mm. be and are the most important years when it comes to oral health and revolution in India. True. Yeah. I, I, just by looking around, right, the kind of revolution what the Western countries had 
uh, mm. 10 years 15 years mm. uh, earlier now we are having that kind of revolution if you see the total number of d2c brands which are out in Correct. the market every Correct. every other month we see new startup coming who's mm. selling an electric toothbrush you know a water flosser mm. worth of 3500 to 8000 and people are willing to buy it yes which means there's a, a, a drastic change in their uh, opinion about oral health right? people now want to just go with clear aligners they do not want traditional metal braces so just look at the awareness i think mm-hmm. 10 years are golden years for dentistry so uh, i mean like, i'm so happy to yeah. listen somebody uh, who speaks just like my mind i mean you are speaking my mind i and i just say always that uh, like you know dentists are sitting on a very big gold mine of knowledge uh, the problem is uh, the the education makes the vision narrow but that gold mine they are really not realizing but yes uh, like uh, you know people get inspired from uh, uh, what you have done and uh, similar people so i think uh, you are the future leaders who would be actually leading the uh, entire group and i also strongly say that dentistry is never going to die until you have 32 <laughs> it's all good <laughs> right. and and it's beyond actually it's, it's uh, beyond. so yeah it's beyond because uh, the field i work in is uh, i talk about genetics i talk about saliva and other stuff uh, but then uh, there's lot to do because you know we just segregate science uh, as dentistry as biomedical biochemical but science is not discrete it is interdisciplinary so the day we really understand uh, with heart and soul i think um, and slowly it's happening i mean we see the change and as as you rightly said even the customer avatar is also uh, changing that way people are accepting new things and they want new things uh, that is yeah. most important yeah you so you know, believe uh, sorry yeah. to add one more point as you mentioned yeah, dental sure. genetics mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. Uh, we've had a few patients uh, out of 55000 patients that we've served mm-hmm. in last years mm-hmm. the kind of questions they have on dental stem cells one patient <laughs> was adamant i have read a few papers and you know you can uh, grow enamel in vitro when will you uh, do it in my mouth can you grow <laughs> my teeth and he had read literally all the research papers available out there on the internet uh-huh. and he was not from a uh, uh, metro one uh, city he was from one of the uh, uh, villages mm-hmm. uh, uh, in bihar mm-hmm. who had who was so well read I was just asking. He was adamant. No, I'll wait for five years. Doctor, can you just give me a timeline? Ten years. Me, you will grow my teeth. So I'll wait for ten years. You know. See. I was like, for oh, now, implants is the best option. Please get it done. And later, <laughs> ten years, you know, we can uh, grow a tooth in your mouth. Tooth. Yeah. Yeah. No, and and uh, same way as if you see, if you if we see the molecular diagnostics part, now even uh, uh, I am not dishonoring anybody. uh in terms of education or uh, socio economic level but even the maid or the dood wala who comes they also know they can speak rtpcr right they, they so so that uh, it it is a revolution in itself so that is what i mean it's very, as i agree with you the next 10 years is very very promising we just need to open our eyes and grab all the opportunities so Absolutely. dr vidhi uh, what would be your message to the Uh, aspiring young aspiring dentists wow a lot of things which i can mention but to uh, brief a few number one as you rightly mentioned keep your eyes open and understand your forte or your domain there are a lot of stuff i mean i myself had written down 20 possible uh, roles what a dental surgeon can perform to begin with right uh, from a non clinical perspective the person can be a dental data annotator he could be you know uh, ml uh, uh, set image set analyst the person can be dental content writer or a dental hr you know there's just numerous things yeah, so nice. before before you graduate please do internship in whichever companies you feel like are offering such kind of trainings uh, and you know get your hands on on a few things so that you exactly you know if you want to uh, go ahead with clinical or non clinical uh, direction second once you get on this path don't lose your patience it's it's a long game and until or unless you have not done 100% of your uh, you've not given 100% of yours right 
uh, trying and exploring all possible options in that particular domain, you would really not know if you want to continue with the same or not. So to cite one example, uh, we've got a lot of practitioner clinicians in our team who practice dentistry and also they are from uh, most prestigious colleges uh, from, from India, to name a few, like that Savita Dental College, Manipal uh, School mm -hmm. of Dental College. They've done, they've practiced for three to five years and now they think, right, uh, they're done with the practice, uh, they, they know enough and now they want to try non-clinical for next three to five years. That's the kind of clarity what they have. Mm. Certain people have shifted from non-clinical to clinical because mm. non-clinical, the understanding of patient's mindset to analyze mm. and data in certain way, which is nowhere close to, to in dental colleges. Correct. Perspective, their lens have completely changed and now they think they would be the best in dental practice and now it's the right time to you know start with the, with the clinic Absolutely. so after doing all this detailed uh, analysis now they have started so it's yeah. never too late give yeah. your 100% and just just start uh, and third uh, people say you know i have so much of ideas i have listed my ideas uh, and i do not know where to start uh, I, I think i'm not 100% ready trust me you, you're never 100% ready no matter <laughs> how much you prepare so just start, go with the flow. And uh, as you go along, you would know if you need to pivot somewhere, uh, you know, sh shut down a few operations or, you know, concentrate more on a few domains. So uh, be positive uh, and just keep going. Thank you, Dr. Vidhi, for your time. It was fantastic knowing you. And it was very, very inspirational and amazing to hear your journey, your experiences and the kind of revolution you have brought into dentistry i wish you all the very success and i wish dental those uh, would would fly sky high and skyrocket its business in terms of business as well as you are really helping people it is very 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 beneficial to the entire population so i wish you all the best and uh, yes i think we will keep meeting again and again thank you so much for your time Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I'm sure it would have at least inspired a couple of people uh, to think in a direction which they didn't. It would have changed the opinions of a few dental surgeons here who think dentistry is dying. And just trust me, next 10 years, we have this golden opportunity to tap in that 60%, 60 to 65 percent of total population of India. Right. Imagine a 1.5 billion population and 65 percent is a great number who have dental problems but are not visiting a, a dental surgeon due to whatever notions, lack of awareness, phobia. Mm. We are just, you know, uh, uh, disintegrating all this phobia, eradicating. And imagine the number of footfalls and conversion, entire change of situation in India. I just cannot wait to see that day. And Absolutely. I'm sure everybody share the same feeling. Thank you so Absolutely. much for having me and letting me share my journey here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.